In this video, I'm going to show you how I animated this design in one day. Liar! Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is Video Shop. This will be a process breakdown, not a step-by-step -step tutorial. If you want to dig deeper into any particular techniques, you can view the full workflow. It's 12 hours split over two videos. Instead, I'll talk about the creative process, motion design collaborations, and working under time pressure. My fault, actually. And also touch on some of the methods that I use to bring this artwork to life. Okay, let's get started. We'll look at the finished animation shortly, but let's start with the brief. I didn't have the greatest start with this. It was a collaboration organized by Mark Lawrence. Oh, hi, Mark. And the theme was mid-century graphic design. 13 animators, each animated in a different design. I'll be honest, when I signed up, I was really taken with these, but by the time I joined the email chain, all the good ones have been taken. Pro tip, if you sign up to a motion collab, be quick on the draw when they kick off. So I ended up with this, a magazine cover from 1949, designed by Irvin Harper. I'm sure it's unique and interesting for its time, but it just wasn't inspiring me. I toyed briefly with the idea of faking my own death, but that seemed a bit drastic. I suppose you think that's funny. So I just ignored it for a month. Meanwhile, on the WhatsApp group, people were posting their submissions and I'm like, I see Ivan's submission and I'm immediately relieved that he got that design instead of me because he did a better job than I could have imagined. But that didn't really help with this and I couldn't dodge it forever. So the day before deadline, I dragged myself to my computer. What really inspired me was Narek's submission. Not only is the animation fantastic, but he showed his workings out. He hadn't just looked at the artwork, the research fed into the animation, and it was interesting seeing his process. I realized what I was doing was just looking at the design and I hadn't done a second of research. I've talked about my approach for getting ideas before, and this time it was no different. I pulled together reference using PureRef, and at the same time, frantically Googling and reading articles about Harper. A few things stood out. His iconic marshmallow sofa, the fun, erratic typography of this ad, this clock, the fact that he designed the Herman Millen logo in one hour. Could I link these things somehow? This ad. He clearly had a playful approach to design. So I'd spent nearly an hour on research and now I had too many ideas, too many options. It was time to pin down what I was actually going to do. Except, like an idiot, I didn't. I had a vague idea of what I'd do, but I didn't have a storyboard or an idea of how I'd link things together. My plan was recreate this as best I could and move the camera around, link or use the clock element somehow, use the same rotation around other elements so I could match cut different scenes and avoid time consuming bespoke transitions. The chairs seemed like a good way into the abstract imagery of the magazine cover. I mean, I still didn't know what the hell these shapes were, but I guess they could be elements of chairs. I bought a chair model from Sketchfab and found some other free ones. I'm sure none of them were correct for the era, but I wasn't gonna spend hundreds of pounds on 3D models for this collaboration. Sorry, Mark. I even downloaded this model thinking, well, no idea actually. The style of the house was appropriate for the era, but I don't know, bung a camera on it and see what happens. It didn't take long before I ditched that. You've got a day, mate, not a week. By the way, this definitely isn't how to work on a paid client project, making it up as you go along. To get your shit together. But for an unpaid collaboration, yeah. I set up this scene using the advanced 3D renderer. I've covered it before, so do watch this video if you're new to it. Basically, it makes it very simple to import 3D models and add an HDRI to get some basic lighting and shadows. Perfect for this. The models would end up grayscale or tinted anyway, so I didn't need to adjust any colors or textures on the models. Also, the lighting could be basic, as long as there was shadow on the floor to give a sense of depth. And yes, the shadow isn't quite connecting with the chair legs, this might be a limitation of advanced 3D renderer, I'm not sure. But yes, I did try moving the floor up to correct it, and it didn't work. I just left it as it is, since most people won't notice, and there was lots of other stuff to do. I decided to have 12 chairs, each one on top of the circles from the clock, so thematically it's covering these two elements. For time, I just had the chairs appear on as the camera rotates around and then disappear off. Talking of time, I've covered this in more detail before, so I won't wang on about it here. But given the time pressure of the project, I used time remapping to get the animation done quickly. That meant animating everything in a linear way. So if I preview it, you'll see that there's no easing. All the easing is done here with the time remapped keyframes. There's a downside to this technique, but we'll come back to that at the end. But a benefit is I could use the same timing and camera moves on the lockup elements, which would make doing a match cut very simple. I'll come back to that too. Let's run through the layers in this scene. If you download the free project file, the layers might differ slightly, but the look will be the same. 
This texture here is from the supplied artwork. I just clone stamped it in Photoshop and it's set to multiply. And a couple of paper textures here add in a very subtle grade, plus some curves on an adjustment layer. There's no depth of field with Advanced 3D, but I wanted a stylized look anyway. I did an adjustment layer and keyframed a Gaussian blur. Gaussian? Crude, but fine for this. I have a pre-comp here with some photocopy images. I can almost justify this, since the chairs are from an old magazine advert, which feasibly could have been photocopied. A rare instance of a non-arbitrary texture. That's set to overlay with the opacity knockback. Lastly, adjustment layers for chromatic aberration, posterized time, so it's 12 frames per second, and some grain. And that gives us this. As I said before, I don't know exactly what Irvin Harbour had in mind with these shapes, but my best guess is that they're meant to represent pieces of chairs or furniture generally. I thought maybe the backs of chairs for this and this. I went into Blender and split up some bits of chair models and also made approximations of these black shapes and ended up with these bits. Still wasn't sure what this was though. Canoe? Oh yes! This is where I deviated from the artwork a bit. But since there were going to be other elements flying around, in addition to what finally resolved here, I could have some artistic license. That was my excuse anyway. So I had this as a chair and had another chair at the top here, but you'd only properly see that on the 16.9 version anyway. I had all of these shapes in one comp so I could work on the camera move and placement. Once I was happy with that, I made duplicates, which had red, blue and black elements only in each one. Next I focused on trying to match the colour and texture of the artwork, but I ended up overcompensating a little bit, kind of leaning into the halftone effect. So this is the final comp. So it's the same duration as the chair sequence with exactly the same timing on the time remapping. We'll come back to this comp, but let's just go into this pre-comp. This is uh, what I'm calling the clean version. So there's no texture on these shapes at all. So we've got separate comps for red, black, gray, which are those chairs. And I've just added a, a few effects, including Venetian blinds, just to give, uh, to give those horizontal lines and uh, choke out and choke in just to round off the edges of those a little bit. And then we've got blue and we've got the text on top, which is white. All of these three colors are set up pretty much the same, which is it's the same camera move on all of them. So it loops and they're just rotating in front of a camera, which is all the way down here, but I've pulled it all the way back and zoomed in just to flatten everything out then these bits of chair are rotating around as well. This layer marker is the position of the lockup elements. There's a slight paper texture on it. Then I've done a halftone version, calling it a halftone version. And that's got versions of the same black, blue and red pre-comps, except I went into what I'm gonna call pre-comp hell. To get this halftone effect, I kind of brute forced it so to spare your sanity we won't look at every single comp. As you can tell from the time lapse here I went down a very hacky route to get a sort of half tone effect. I brought in a comp that I'd used before in a previous project which uses CC ball action and a few other effects. There's a few tutorials out there on this effect that you can google but it didn't really work with this imagery as there's not much contrast. It did give a nice crunchy edge effect but that was too large so in my rush to get this done I decided to have four pre-comps for each colour each one a quarter of the screen. Then scale all four down and slot them together in a final comp for each color. I then used a black and white dot pattern on top set to Silhouette Luma. Honestly, this is a totally stupid half assed way to get this done, but sometimes you plow on in one direction and you get a result you're happy with. It doesn't always have to be a pretty elegant solution. Anyway, back to the project. And then that's finally in the sort of half tone pre-comp and then I've got four instances where I've just sort of shifted them around and then sort of laid them on top of each other. So when you sort of add them all together and then set it to linear burn, uh, you get this sort of off register sort of dots effect, which I would not have this many pre-comps 
if I thought that someone else was jumping onto this project, it was basically just get it done and brute force it, just to come up with the with a look that was interesting. That's applied to all of those comps, and then the final result looks like this. So back to this master comp. So I've got that half tone there, and it's also using the texture as a luma mat as well. And then just underneath it, just to bump up the color a little bit, I just pulled in that clean comp. Then most of the other elements from the chairs comp are there as well. So we've got the, the paper textures, just to add a tiny bit of grade. And then curves and posterized time set to 12 frames a second. The text layers are just pre-comps with text animators, just sim simply animated on and off. So we've got the, the black, which is used, it's lumped in with all the black elements, but I've also put it on top just to make it stand out a little bit more. And then the, the white text, which again is text animators on and off. And that's it for this for this comp. So the the time remapping, obviously the disadvantage of that is you're slowing everything down. So all the animation is contained within these two comps. So it's quicker to amend, but the trade-off is there's no overlap in the motion. You're slowing down all of these elements moving in, but you're slowing down the text, you're slowing down everything, which is fine for holding on this uh, lockup frame for a beat, but it's not the best if you want control over individual elements. So yeah, it's a trade-off. Oh, quick little tip before we move on. I, I've i never really done this before with projects, but you can go into your label colors and edit them. And with this, which had a very distinct color palette, I actually created a black label color and matched the the red color to the artwork just to make it easier to see what was what in these comps. All of that together and then cut together with the chairs gives us this. And this is what I sent to Mark as my submission. I'd worked all day and that was 2.30 in the morning at that point. I went to bed and then woke up three hours later and couldn't get back to sleep because I had about five or six ideas for what I absolutely needed to do to just do some quick amends. So I ended up working most of the next day to do a revised version. And Mark, bless him, uh, said that we could have an extra day or two if we needed it. Uh, I'm not sure if that was a blessing or a curse, to be honest. But one of the amends that I made was to have the chairs and the the clock hands, which I'd brought in, float up as we push in and the camera starts to rotate around quicker. So I thought that'd be more interesting than them just disappearing off. There wasn't time to do that for the first version. What I've done here is I've just pre-rendered that because advanced 3D in After Effects can be quite taxing on your computer. The other thing I did was to vary the frame rates because there's many ways to draw attention in animation, obviously composition, color, editing, dynamism, or otherwise of camera moves, sound, obviously there's no sound on this though. Another thing you can do is um, frame rates to draw, draw attention. So I knew that a few other people were animating theirs on uh, twos, so 12 frames a second. I started mine on, uh, let's see, so I actually started mine on eight and then changed the frame rate to 12, then to 20. And then here, I thought as they're floating up, switch to 24 frames a second. So the floating is smoother and more fluid. Then as you go into the transition into the artwork elements, we've got another adjustment layer here, which is back to 12 again. So switching frame rates. Another change was to just keep the fidelity of the final artwork elements. I kind of felt a bit bad that uh, I hadn't stuck to it properly. I've sort of, I've tweaked things. So these shapes here aren't the office chair wheels anymore. We've got the circles. We've got this shape here, whatever the hell that is. To do that, I've just gone into these comps and mixed between them. So in the red comp here, for example, I just brought in a shape layer and traced over the artwork imagery 
and then keyframe that over a few, like 10 frames or something. So at some point we switch between the 3D asset to the shape layer and then back again. And it's all happening so quickly that you don't really notice. And here in this comp, we've got this chair flying past quickly and that's a ma kind of a magician's sleight of hand to cover up here where we switch between the legs of the office chair to that shape. Also wasn't happy that I used a similar but not the same typeface for the letters so I traced over those and then just hand animated those in and yeah that was it. So this was the final version, final final, underscore final, capital letters final. It's obviously a motion collaboration which you know you're not getting paid for and if I was doing this as a client project I would probably quote three to four days rather than uh, killing myself over two days to get it done and there's still things that I'm not happy with. First of all I think there's a there's a sense of playfulness in Urban Harper's designs which I don't think are quite nailed in the animation. I think it's a bit sort of po-faced. Would have been nice for it to be a little bit more fun. Another idea I had which I just didn't have time to do was in the research stage I discovered that when he was working at George Nelson Associates most of his designs were credited to Nelson and given the fact that he's got his signature on the magazine cover I thought it might be a, a fun thing to have Nelson draw on and then sort of be crossed off or rubbed off and then you know you have Harper animating but actually as I say it out now now sounds a bit lame I still think I could have linked the dots from the clock to say these dots here better. You know, that's the limits of cutting from one scene to another with a match cut. You're delving into bespoke transition territory there, but it would have been nice to have some of those dots follow and transition onto this scene, I think. I actually wanted the color to be introduced in the first half rather than it just being a black and white scene with a match cut, even if it's just tinting, you know, one or two of the chairs or something, just to, just to link those elements more. Talking of these elements, I don't mind this red shape here, but I wasn't happy with how this blue shape here turned out. It's not like the artwork, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. The clock hands definitely get lost to me, and given the fact that the the second hand was red in the original artwork, I would have loved to have that red. And then again, would have been another sort of linking thing to sort of transition through to the next scene. Uh, but yeah, but nothing's finished, as they say. Uh, it always has to be abandoned at some point. And yeah, I mean, to use another cliche, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. But yeah, that's it. Hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.